This is Scott McVicker, co-host of Ring In Free Thoughts with Dan and Scott. Catch us live every other Friday night, 9.15, on the Let Freedom Ring Facebook page, the Let Freedom Ring YouTube channel. Tune in. We talk about who knows what. We name the crumb bomb of the week. You never know who it's going to be. I wear fun shirts. This one's got my daughter on it. Tune in. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Scott McVicker of Ring and Free Thoughts with Dan and Scott and Merrimack TV proudly bring to you the host of Let Freedom Ring, Dan Bolia. Welcome, Let Freedom Ring. Uh, we want to congratulate the new coach of the New England Patriots, Gerard Mayo. Uh, the team is in your hands now. Really excited to see what's going to happen uh, next season. But my guest this week, Leo, no, not Leo <laughs> Connors. Bobby Bollier, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, just adding to the episode's <clears throat> record-breaking. Yeah. Almost like a Roman Reigns streak, you know. And uh, Dave Fournier. Thanks for having me, Dan. No, pleasure to have you guys, two returning guests. Uh, how you guys been since your last appearances? Bobby, I want to say it was in June. Dave, I think it was maybe like November, October. Was, but yeah, uh, how you guys been? Yeah, you want to go first? Yeah, I, I've been all right. You know, just tired of the weather, but, you know, I think we all are. Yeah, I'm noticing the days are getting a little longer, though. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. You know, because um, I'm not a winter guy. And the other day I was like, why am I in a bad mood? And I was like, oh, it's January, Dan. This is who you are in January. You could have been hungry, too. That's a bullier trait. <laughs> that, that, that is true. <laughs> but how are you doing? You're about to be a dad. Yeah. Uh, like less than a month at this point. So, yeah, no, yeah. It's, Congratulations. No, thank you. But, uh, yeah, other than that, you know, just, you know, working, hitting the CrossFit gym, um, watching Wrexham move up the line. So, yeah. Nice, nice. We're really excited. Not, we, have, we don't know the gender yet. We do not. I heard if, if it's a boy, Dan... Was the name? Or? Yeah, we haven't told anyone any names, so. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I just heard rumors and stuff like that. So you chose not to know the gender. <laughs> yeah, we chose not to. I, I yeah. like that. I think yeah. that's like the old school way. Yeah. Yeah. It's something exciting. Like, I'm ex like I'm just curious. Do I have a niece? Do I have a nephew? You know? I get to like, at the when it happens, they're like, they're going to ask me, like, what gender is it? And I'm like this. Ah, you're the doctor. You tell me. <laughs> Do you think they ask, like, okay, here's the thing. Guys, you haven't really, like, you have the go-to name. Yeah, so yeah. as soon as they're like, this is a life, name it, you're ready for that question. Unless it's a girl. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. We're, still, we're still figuring that out. We'll get there. We'll get there at some point. No, really excited, though, about that. Mm -hmm. uh, can't wait. Um, let me ask you guys this. We talked about this on uh, Ringing Free Thoughts with Dan and Scott the other day. But, um, is that the bi-weekly show? Bi-weekly show. They might have seen uh, some promotion for that. Yeah. But, I didn't uh, even know it existed, to be honest. Yeah. Dave, <laughs> uh, I hope you're following Let Freedom Ring on Facebook. Um, but do you guys are you guys into New? It, it, we're a couple weeks into the the new the new year. Do you guys do any New Year's resolutions or anything that you're planning on doing exciting in 2024? I don't really like to make resolutions because I feel like you're just setting yourself up to fail. Like you know, I'm like, I think you can do it throughout the year, you know. But I think just to say, oh, it's January first, like because you know January, you know. Tenth, you're probably going to just renege on that. Yeah. In yeah. most cases, that you know. New Year, New Me. It's like, no, no, no. You're the same. You. Like, <laughs> January is the only month that Planet Fitness or any other gym is you know packed, and then after that, they're empty. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yeah, and I don't really do resolutions. Like, I mean, last year I like decided to take my health it's good, but it had nothing to do with like you know a resolution. It's like you know, all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm in the hospital because I'm like sick all the time, and like, yo, oh, I should probably get in health. <laughs> so. That is true. As, and as we age, like, you know, it's in your it's, 20s, like, you just are like, whatever, I'm living forever. And, yeah. you know. Or you take a sip of coffee, you're like, ah, heartburn. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, mine was simple. It's just not going, I mean, I know I have a Dunkin' Donuts in front of me, but I have cut back on it, that. It's a tea, though. It is a it, tea. It, it, um, same price, though. Yeah. Because it, it was a financial decision. Like, so, yeah. you know. I actually made the same choice this year because at the beginning of January, they I have the rewards, like, yeah. the app from Dunkin', and they sent me a recap of like how many, <laughs> like all the stuff yeah. and how much, and then I started figuring out how much I spent and I'm like, yeah, it's time to stop going there so much. Like, yeah, it's, it, I mean, 
We live in New England. It's like it, it, you, there's a Dunkin' Donuts every yeah. what couple yeah. of miles. Yeah. You know? yeah, I do. I, I am curious though if uh, that hurt Dunkin' Donuts' business. They're like, oh, let's be like Spotify and like tell you how much you spend or something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, what have I, I done? I mean, it definitely affected me because I'm like, and I mean, part of it is because I'm always like out like between my regular job and doing DoorDash on the other part of it. So when I'm out DoorDashing, like I need to use a bathroom, I'll use Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I got to buy something. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's how they get. I mean, that's how they get you. I mean, I. I then I you know next thing you know it's just for coffee. Next thing you know I'm getting a chocolate chip muffin every day. Next thing you know it's a, I get the turkey sausage egg and cheese. I'm tricking myself like, hey, this is okay. Like it's turkey. <laughs> Still 400 calories. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing pretty well, even though I, I have this in front of me. And we're not advertising. We're not saying go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk about this. You guys are both big fans of wrestling, like I am. There has been a lot to talk in the in the wrestling world. I want to start. With all elite wrestling, AEW, liking to keep their names in the headlines. Um, recently, Tony Khan went off on Twitter. I, I, I mean, I think USA Network had said something, and then Tony just goes into battles with Eric Bischoff and all these other yeah. people. What do you guys think of Tony Khan's Twitter rants? Uh, they're entertaining. Gets traction. What what it's doing is gaining like traction online and clicks and likes and views, which like if you have an X account, I get all I get targeted by all these AEW Stand, fan accounts stands. because they pay for blue, and so anytime this stuff gets fed through, I'm getting you know bombarded by these guys. And Tony Khan's the one who's pushing all that, so like it's a way to try to get WWE's information out of the algorithm. So from that perspective, it's great, but from a business perspective, it's just he looks like an idiot. Just like what are you doing? He does. Yeah, <laughs> we could spend the rest of the show on this subject. <laughs> to be honest. Um, my point is though, like like you said, yes, it might be getting AW in there, but it's AW promoting WWE. Like yeah. he did more to put Jinder Mahal over in that one tweet than WWE has done in months. Like, yeah, I was uh, honestly, and I, I'll say this because I made a post about it. I everybody knows I'm a Jinder Mahal fan. Yeah. I make no no, you know, I I liked when he won the title, and uh, but it made me even look forward to that match even more. But the whole thing was like the argument was about Hook facing Samoa Joe and how many wins like I don't care about wins and losses yeah. in wrestling I just don't Neither do I. It, it, I mean it did actually start from USA making fun of the Jaguars for posting about their uh, playoff tickets going on sale and then it led to like oh, Tony Khan coming back at him and then it went at the cage match rating that's that's how it all really started uh, but yeah it's like who cares who wins and loses like I want to be entertained and the, and the win loss number most of the time is made up I don't know 28 people hook beat no, 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 and I don't think I think the last time a record made matter was Goldberg, and even you know, yeah, that was a lot of made up, yeah, numbers. Yeah. But I enjoyed Jinder Mahal versus Rollins, and then I watched the Hook and Samoa Joe match, and I also enjoyed that. So, like, what are we? I, I guess you're right. He's just trying. He, it's funny that he went at Eric Bischoff and said, uh, "You, uh, what do you call him? You has been." Yeah, it's like but you're still. He, I think he's. Doing that controversy creates cash playbook, which is coined by Eric Bischoff. By Eric, yes, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. I think it's more to like um, Eric Bischoff took shots at WWE, and AEW taking shots at WWE. They're like, oh, well, we're the same. AEW's on Wednesday nights. WCW was on Monday nights during the same time as WWE, so they're truly competing. Yeah. No offense, to AEW, you're not a competition with WWE unless you go head to head with WWE, which you're not on the middle of the week. Yeah, I agree. But here's the thing with Eric Bischoff. He took shots at WWE, but he was doing it as a wrestling character. He yeah. wasn't doing yes. it on Twitter. He wasn't doing it on social media. Yeah. And I think that's where like I lose the respect for Tony Khan is that, you know, what what is the point? Like concentrate on, you know, your own promotion. Right. Get the word out there. And I think we need to, you know, we need more than one wrestling promotion. Mm -hmm. So just do your thing, you know. Your TV station apparently is happy with your ratings like so who cares what anybody else is saying? Right. Yeah, that's a really good point cuz uh Dak uh, from FTR went at Bischoff and it's like, you're right. He was doing that on TV in character. Tony's doing this on Twitter as Tony Khan. Right. I thought, and I'm going to get into this later, I think Tony Khan is so disliked at this point, he should be a TV character. In my opinion. I'm not saying he can act. I know you, yeah, you don't, I'm not saying that. Dude, he's so bad. But I think that would be terrible. Like, I just think it, it would be the wrong kind of like hatred if he was on TV. I think well, I'll, just... I'll explain what I think it could have been when we get to that okay. that point. I want to ask this, just sticking kind of with they're already disliked. I know, Dave, you said you saw the uh, the Young Bucks interview 
from from Dynamite last night. They're kind of going with the we are the EVPs and everybody hates us and uh, they're they're starting to run with that. They have the mustaches now. What did you think of that so far? So I'm not a Young Bucks fan by any means. Never yeah. have been. But I have to say I liked them in that character. Like I'm like okay, they're already hated. Like they're doing something that you know maybe it'll get over. But you know we got to see how long. I you know this is only one week, so I, I don't want to judge it yet. But what I've seen so far, I've liked. Is he gonna, are they going to call themselves the corporation? Because <laughs> that's what it felt like to me, like <laughs> corporate Young Bucks. <laughs> well, I was a Young Bucks fan. It's not that I don't, and I can go back and watch some of the good times, right, like from the old years where I did like the Young Bucks. But as time's gone on, it's like I feel like they've hindered the company with their own behavior in, in their role of being, you know, leadership, um, which has kind of turned me against them backstage but they were already pretty boring on television mm -hmm. and i just thought they already hate you if you run with it maybe you have something yeah and i think uh, out of all the guys that started aw those guys like when they came over in 2018 2019 that all started they're the only ones who didn't like right now this hopefully is their morphing but they hadn't really morphed like they've been heel face kind of but they've never really changed and this might be the first time they could like, change a character like kenny omega has evolved multiple times throughout yeah. the times of AW. Same with Cody. Same with even Hangman Page. But like the Young Bucks were kind of still stuck in that like same thing that they've been doing since you know 2016. Even I mean yeah, they didn't evolve. Yeah, you yeah. know. So I'm excited to see what that happens. Um, and it's someone I you know someone commented to me on Facebook because I, I they said I thought you liked AW. I said I've never said I hated AW. Mm -hmm. I just don't like Tony Khan and I don't like. I don't like the young books. I don't like their management style. Yeah. You know, not that I work there, but I see everything. It bleeds online. You know, that's, that's where I kind of stand. I think what I think people have to stop is like, oh, you can't like one or, or like the other. Like, right. I'll criticize WWE when I don't like something. I'll criticize AEW. I mean, I don't watch a lot of AEW just for time reasons more than anything else. But it doesn't mean I'm going to sit there and hate on it. If I haven't seen it, I'm not even going to comment on it, you know. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right, though. I, I agree 100%. I like both. I want both to exist. So that a lot of the tribalism, I think, is online banter. Yeah. You know, for... for it's really heavy on, on X, like on yeah. Twitter. Twitter's such a cesspool. <laughs> yeah. I got to ask this, though. Uh, end of the year, uh, MJF loses the uh, AEW title. He had it for about a year. Um, the contract is up. He's injured. You know, there was a lot of stuff being said right before the injury. Now we haven't heard anything about MJF in a couple of weeks. A lot of people said he signed with AEW, but that's not confirmed. Do you guys think that there's any is the, is the rug going to get pulled out? Is MJF? I'm sure he's hurt, but is there a chance that he, we see him in WWE? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> it, MJF has changed character wise, and you can show that he can be a face or a heel and whatnot. And that's great. I don't think he wants to go to WWE where he's kind of going to be put to the middle. No offense to MJF, while he's very huge in AEW and whatnot, going to WWE, there's a lot of people in WWE. And Brock Lesnar is coming back soon. So, like, where does he even fit in that card if he comes over? Financially, it would make no sense for him to go to WWE to go to the middle just for a big payday where then he could lose out on more money in the long term. I think he's going to stay with AEW. I mean, I think there's a lot of talk, but I think that's done purposely on his part and on AEW's part to make it seem like he's not going to stay. But I think in the end, he stays there. Mm -hmm. I, I I agree with you guys. I think that's, but I, and I do think that's the safe move. And hopefully, Tony pays him accordingly because I would say he's their biggest draw. Right. Um, but I do think WWE could offer him a lot of money too. Yeah, you know. no, and, and they definitely probably could offer a lot more money per year for that. But then you well, you got to ask yourself stuff, yeah, now: He's injured. Do you take the big payday if it's offered? You're maybe. getting hurt. You don't know how long that career is. I've heard people saying that he's going to go into movies, and I actually want—I know you wanted to mention this. He was in the Iron Claw for five seconds. They scrapped that yeah, part of the movie. They scrapped a big yeah. part of what. Yeah. Um. Because a lot of people are like he might make that transition. That's where, and I'm like, but you don't. He doesn't know that. I'm just saying, like, if you want to be financially secure, and, uh, and WWE offers him a boatload of cash, I mean, it wouldn't be the dumbest idea to take it. Yeah, we also don't know how much he's made already. Yeah, he might already be financially s fine, and that yeah, the big payday pays off. But in the long term, sticking with AEW, 
and then developing as until he gets to his late 30s and then maybe makes a WWE run when some of the card kind of p- moves out for him. It just He's a main eventer in AEW. He's not a main eventer in WWE. And this is that same... Yeah. Right, yeah, but it's the same, like, how Eric Bischoff thought of WCW. Like, Stone Cold Steve Austin was a main eventer in WCW. He could be in WWE because there wasn't the Hogan's and things like that. He's kind of in that same spot. I yeah. wonder if he wants that additional... Tra- I mean, not that there's a right. lot more, but there's definitely more travel with WWE than there is with AEW. So, And I can't picture WWE wanting to hire anybody else part-time. They have enough, yeah. enough people that are already in that. I don't think he would be able to get that, but you also got to factor in, like, and this is not a, sl- a slight at AEW, but no kids growing up want to be professional wrestlers or, like, I want to be in the second, you know, second-tier company. They want to be WWE. And that, he lo- I mean, from what he said, he I, absolutely I, I loved hear you, it. But Ric Flair was in the second looking. Well, it's a different years. time. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> that generation. But if you think about it, really, until Vince became big, yeah, yeah. Ric Flair was actually, like, the NWA yeah. was the biggest yeah. wrestling promotion out there. Ric Flair traveled all the country mm-hmm. until it became just Jim Crockett. Yeah, I would say Ric Flair was at the top of the game where it was at there. And then Vince, and then, as yeah, he was already a star when Vince, like, started getting there. Mm-hmm. And then Flair was, like, 40 when he went over yeah 92 because he yeah. said he has said he did always want to go there and he did it um very different different situation um that just brings up to my next point the devil storyline in AEW. um i thought they could have done they, the mjf would talk about that contract a lot and then he just stopped talking about it which never had the uh bidding war of 2024 that was just kind of dead but the devil storyline ends with adam cole very predictable, very un- uh, underwhelming, at least for me. Uh, what did you guys think? I, I haven't really watched a lot of AEW, as I said, so I, <coughs> I even had to ask you who it turned out to be, and then I do remember actually I heard about it. Um, from what I'm understanding, there's a lot of disappointment in the fact that it turned out to be Adam Cole. Um, part of it, I get why they went with the obvious, because that was the plans all along, mm-hmm. but I think they also like blew a chance to kind of get people talking about them again by not having it be somebody else right Uh, yeah and just i'm sorry the undisputed kingdom is a dumb name i've never cared like no offense to michael bennon the other guy matt taven i've never really cared for matt taven even when he was independent around here like it just it doesn't do anything like they're not like one stop stop referencing back to wwe get rid of the undisputed part like why are we why even incorporating that like it just i don't know it just and they're both from Michael Bennett too. Was yeah. a new, you know, started out his career back. You know. mm-hmm. And they're and they're great guys. Yeah, they're great uh, wrestlers. Wrestlers, but I don't like. I think it, when the reveal, it should just been Adam Cole and Wardlow. Right. You don't need Taven, Bennett, Roderick Strong. I feel like you those don't guys. Need another faction. They're just yeah. You don't need another faction. I feel like those guys are just. They're there. They're yeah. just there. Yep. Um. I thought the opportunity was missed in the sure fact that I wanted it to be Tony Khan. And I had reasons why. MJF had, one, held him up for money, right, when he came back. His contract was coming up. They never really discussed that. I thought it should be Tony because of you could have emphasized the contract ending, him being bitter about him holding up for money. Now he could possibly leave. If MJF had left, Tony could be like, I got rid of him, and if he comes back, now you could have had this. I just think the reveal was such a letdown. We were sitting there going, like, please don't be Adam Cole. Please don't be Adam Cole. Yeah, and, and the Adam minute Cole. he came out, I went, it's Adam Cole. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I understand where you could see. You could also could have said that Tony Khan unveils him. They beat him up, and he goes, you made a deal with the devil to sign the contract, and now you won't be on, you won't be on television going forward, and then takes him out, and he can play off his story. Problem is, the guy's on cocaine all the time, and he can't, he can't act worth a day. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's true. That's I think that's <laughs> he's got some problems. Hindering him. Hindering him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just I just, yeah, it was just a letdown. Yeah. Um, obviously, if it was like a Dolph Ziggler or something like that, that would have been like, well, how does that make sense? But if I were to keep it the way they did, I would have trimmed it. It should have just been Cole. Warlow obviously has a gripe with him, right? And not have all these other guys that we just are just there, right? You know. I um, want to talk about this real quick because I know Dave had seen it and wanted to talk about it real quick. Um, Iron Claw, the story of the Von Eric wrestling family. I know you've been obsessed with WCCW lately. Yeah. Uh, Dave, what did you think of the movie? So 
as somebody who, you know, being a little bit older than you guys, I grew up, actually, that was the first non-WWF promotion that I actually had a chance to see because it was broadcast here in Boston. They even did a couple shows here that I remember begging my dad as a kid to go to and it just didn't happen, but um, there were a lot of inconsistencies in the timeline that I had to, like, take out of my mind and remember, like, this is a two-hour movie they had to, you know, and for, you know, dramatic purposes had to kind of cut things out. I think the only thing that I still think they should have done different is they should have left Chris in. I know they were like, oh, too much tragedy, but yeah. it was part of the story. Like, Yeah, that was that was hard to hear in that uh, the director of the podcast where he said it was the, his life was so tragic that it wouldn't be believable in the movie setting. setting. I'm like, but it really happened. <laughs> it did. I think the problem was is now how do you take a two-hour movie and fit his story into it on top of everything else? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, it's almost like treated like his life didn't matter, which is probably part of like how he was already yeah, depressed Michael in became the first place. Michael became both of them. Yeah, yeah they so, tried to... Yeah, I, I honestly found it very enjoyable. Um, I liked it, but yeah, I agree. Like that, that was big. Because I was confused when I was watching. I go, wait a second. I think there was another brother. What am I? Yeah. You know. And I mean, th they did a really good job. And it again, it's a, a biopic, but like kind of based off the, the true story and all that. He, I don't know how much Kevin was really blaming his dad for that. I mean, the '80s were fueled by alcohol and drugs, which is really what took out the the Von Erichs, the pressure from all that. Uh, then they had to cut out the part with MJF, which we talked about earlier, because they just didn't have enough time, and that's a huge part of like starting of the decline of WCCW. They're trying to backfill for the fact that they lost David with uh, Kevin Vaughn, and it just didn't work. Yeah, I mean, and I listened just the other day to a podcast. There was a referee that was also kind of Fritz's right hand man, David mm -hmm. Manning, uh, who just did an interview on a podcast, and he was talking about that he didn't like the way the movie portrayed Fritz because, in his opinion, that wasn't how Fritz like Fritz cared about his sons. So. Yeah. You know, and there was some things like he was actually the one that told Fritz about David dying, and they had it completely different in the movie. But like I said, you could knock out. Like I said, the first thing I noticed was they like, oh, you're on ESPN in 1982. I'm like, they didn't go on ESPN until 1987 when they were like right. on their way out. Like, you know, but you know, you could pick it apart. But if you watch it from a movie standpoint, it, it was really, and they did a good job of telling the story as best they could. I agree, and I felt a lot about that with the Queen movie. I remember seeing that going like, these timelines don't <laughs> add up. Like, yeah, they had the same problem with the Ellen John one. Like, yeah. they just, it, it's because you're taking something that is so big and trying to put it into this thing. And, you know, continuity people just miss things. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, honestly, it very, I highly recommend it. Yeah, if absolutely. If you haven't seen yeah. it, especially if you're a wrestling fan. If you are a wrestling fan, you're going to enjoy this movie. And you found that a lot of non wrestling fans really enjoyed the movie. I'm too. curious to see if this starts a chain of other things that happen in WWE, or not WWE, but in professional wrestling over time, because this movie didn't flop. This movie was actually very well received and looked at, and then on top of it, it made money versus like the budget it had. So I'm curious to see if it like moves into other things. And it was a very small independent movie yeah. company that made it too. So it's, yep. yeah. you know, I think, you know, like from that standpoint, like the hardest point is how do you, like people have to remember it wasn't a documentary, it was a movie. Like, right. If it was a documentary, they could have spent, you know, go yeah. watch, you know, on the, the on the you know Peacock or the network, whatever they have the the documentary that WWE did on them, or yeah. watch they have all the TV episodes from 1982 to 1987. You can watch the whole mm -hmm. thing unfold there, basically. You know, maybe Fritz's side of it as opposed to you know what actually happened, right. but. Yeah, it's always tough. I watched the movie Alive the other day from 1993 about the plane crash in the Chile. Is the that 80s. because you watched the TED show? Yes, oh, that is a <laughs> yeah. great, like I thought, like I love the movies and I was like TV show is gonna be hard. I watched all seven episodes in one night. Like, yeah, I was just like I started watching. I was like expecting it to be horrible. Like, yeah, and then I just like one after the other was like Seth MacFarlane's only really missed once was that that western he did that was horrible. But everything else he's done has always been pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, but yeah, I think the Ted movie influenced me, and I rented it <laughs> for like three ninety nine. And I can say, no way, that movie is one hundred percent accurate to what what it actually <laughs> right, happened. Right, right. So, um, I want to get into this real quick. They're going to start probably announcing soon uh, the Hall of Famers for the twenty twenty four class of the WWE Hall of Fame. I love the Hall. We've been to the Hall of Fame when uh, uh, WrestleMania thirty five. Got to see DX go in, Harlem Heat, a uh, bunch of other people. Yeah. yeah. And, I do hate that it's not on its own night anymore. Like, yeah. yeah. We would go to it. This, we're going to WrestleMania this year. We would have gone to that event if it wasn't at 10 p.m. on a Friday night when we're driving down. 
Yeah, no, it's it's. I mean, the only, the one I what, really wish could have been was Undertaker. <laughs> well, what killed the being its own separate night is that they now have WrestleMania as you know two nights, which yeah. I wish they'd do away with. I honestly feel like I understand they want to get everybody into the show, but I still feel like one night would be enough. Yeah, I agree. I, as someone though, I, it going it's a freaking marathon getting through that day. Yeah, yeah. that when we start thirty five, it was we got in there at five p.m. and we didn't get out until twelve thirty. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a yeah, it's a long night. I mean, I didn't. I went to the Hall of Fame in 2010 and came back home and watched WrestleMania at home instead of going to the stadium in New Jersey just because mm-hmm. I was like, it's like lot. one night's enough, you know. Yeah, and I yeah. got to see Bruno and Backlund and oh, yeah, yeah. like that was like you know. Yeah, but I'm a huge fan of the Hall of Fame. I love they do it. I wish there was somewhere we could go, but I have a few list of names of maybe potential Hall of Famers. Um, you guys, let me know if you think that they they should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. I'm just going to start with this because I've been waiting a very long time. Said it on my first appearance on Leo Connor's show. Bam, bam, Bigelow. Hall of Famer, yay or nay? He should have went in one of the New York ones. Like, he should already be in the Hall of Fame. So, yeah, he's the Hall of Famer. Yeah, and I think if they were going to do it, this would be a good year because it's on the East Coast, which yeah. is where he was, you know. And in Philly. Known from. Yeah. Which he had yeah, a stint Philly. in ECW. Yeah. You know. Uh, Lex Luger. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer by the definition. Um, I don't know if Philadelphia is the place you put him in. Yeah, that's kind of a good point. Like, because that Philadelphia crowd is still tough to this day. I think. So. Yeah. Well, the only thing with that though is like, when are they going to go to Georgia again? You know, or whatever has ties to Luger. Yeah, you do. Well, Georgia and, or Florida would be. Yeah, yeah. Florida, yeah. Texas, or any, anywhere that's not going to rip him apart. <laughs> That'd be sad if Philly did that, and I would hope the Eagles never win another game if they boo Lex Luger. Uh, Miss Elizabeth, definitely, yeah, definitely, she's definitely deserve favorite. being here. Um, Sid Vicious, Sid Justice, Psycho Sid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he he's a Hall of Famer, multi-time champion in multiple promotions. You know, he. Kind of carried WWE a little bit in that little run in 95, 96, 97 ish when uh, they were trying to figure out the headliners and then the big man, you know, with Diesel leaving and all that other stuff. And he, I mean, if no, he just, he if, he did, if he did, if he didn't love softball so much, he'd probably I get it. be bigger. I get it. <laughs> That's why I'm torn on him. I mean, I remember, like you said, he would pop in, like, you know, Warrior left in, like, nine, you know, when he came back in 95 or 96 yeah. and Sid came in. You know, it's just like they, but it was just like he was always had such short stints, and I don't feel like he ever really drew that much money for right. the company. He was just a big man that they could put the belt on, so that when they got to WrestleMania, they could take the belt out of him, and then he would be like, "All right, I'm gonna go do travel softball." <laughs> they were really short stints when I do. You look back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, then he finished out. Even his first back in the you know the night like ninety one, ninety two was like yeah. he was there and gone. You know. And I had to say when he went back to WCW, he must have returned in ninety nine. That's when he hurt his like leg, right? That was two thousand one, yeah. right before they okay. went out of business. But I think he came back in ninety nine, and what well, we hadn't seen him since ninety seven. Yeah, because he wasn't around in ninety eight, which was no. like the biggest year of wrestling, right? So, no, yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, another one that I like: uh, the Loose Cannon, also Flying Brian Pillman, passed away at thirty five, very young, while active in in, in pro wrestling. Now might be the time, now that his son's there working in NXT, so it might be the time. I definitely think he's deserving of being in. It's just a matter of, you know, when. And I think he's more somebody that's got to be more, like, in those southern towns. Yeah. I mean, he had that little short stint in ECW, but it was quick. Nothing yeah. lengthy. Yeah, because even his WWE run was short, right? And, like, I mean, it. he might be one of those ones where, like, they put in but don't have, like, the whole, like, speech thing that they always do every every year where they have like the group of people who go in kind of what they did to Luna Vachon well I have to say like with a Hall of Famer to me is like someone that no one ever forgets and I don't think that Pillman is just remembered for just passing away because a lot of people that you know active on the roster you never forget them but that loose cannon thing had people believing that guy was crazy and I don't think anybody's done that to that level since you know, but um, Sable, Rena, Mer- well, Rena Lesnar. I don't, I, I don't know if she took his last name. Well, we'll say Rena Marrow <laughs> Sable. What do we think? Uh, I, I think she should be in, but I don't think they'll, I don't think she will be just because there's so much bad blood between her and the company. I just don't see it happening. 
Yeah, it sounds like it's more her not wanting yeah. to do it than right. them. Or she goes in when Brock retires and decides to go in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. At the same time. And so that, that way she only has to go show up once. <laughs> I never thought Bruno would go in and he finally did yeah, after yeah. all those years. So it's... Because Sable is definitely the main... Uh, would they call them divas then? I don't think they were divas then. Just... I don't know. But she mm-hmm. was like the... You know, her and China for the that late 90s were the two biggest female names. And oh, no. Sonny. Sonny too, Sonny. yes. Sonny too. Yeah, she's Even the first. Even though she screwed her whole life up. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she, she was the biggest. Like, she was the top downloaded star on... You know, when AOL had first started. Yep. Like So she was definitely bigger. And then Sable kind of overtook her with the whole... That's right. Yeah, like 98 maybe she yeah. more did. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Sonny ever... They got her to wrestle. No, she no. wasn't going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think she started to have problems before, because she like randomly showed up in ECW to return to Chris Canito's side. And I don't think she was she was like with LOD, remember that? Yeah. And then yeah. she was just LOD gone. 2000. Yeah. 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 And Hawk was having his issues too. Uh, here's kind of a wild card one: uh, the man of a thousand holds, Dean Malenko. Yeah, he's a hall. Of, he should be in the Hall of Fame. I yeah. mean, I mean, eventually, I know this. It's hard because the Hall of Fame, the way it is, like there's so many people in there that are in before other people that should have yeah, been in. Sure. To their I standards. Think it's, <laughs> for them, it's all about what's going to draw the. You know. Right. But I wonder how different it's going to be now that Kevin Dunn has gone from the company because right. there were a lot of times Triple H had people he wanted in and Kevin Dunn was like, no, nobody knows who they are and just kiboshed mm-hmm. it. So I think you could start seeing some of that change. Yeah, yeah. John Tenta, Earthquake. Yeah, he's a tough one. Um, he's also one of those maybe kind of guys. Yeah, you know, I mean, what his thing with SummerSlam with Hogan is his like main claim to fame in the WWE, but he never really, he never really worked out fully for him. Yeah. Oh, see, I disagree just because he also had the run as the tag team champions yeah, yeah. With, with Typhoon, and he was there a long time. Um, you know, he sadly, came out. He was Golga. He was Golga. <laughs> yeah. you know. I'd like to forget that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and the shark in in WCW, WCW. they shaved yeah, he, part of his mustache. Yeah, because when Hogan went over to WCW, he brought in guys that he had drawn money with before. So he's yeah. like, "Gotta bring them in here." Well, he's like, "Everybody can be in the Dungeon of Doom, and all my friends well, that, can wrestle." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Kevin Sullivan said, "Would you rather all those guys have like their own segments, or would you rather have one segment and get it over with?" <laughs> he had to hire Hulk, Hulk Hogan's buddies. Yeah, I, I, now I've heard things recently saying like that was part of the deal about coming to WCW. Yeah, yeah. Um. Haku, Ming, one of the faces of fear. I think he deserves it, but I don't know if they'll consider him a big enough name to, right. like, like, to the general wrestling fan, like, especially if you ask the wrestling fans of today, like, are they even going to know who he is? Yeah. yeah, he didn't have enough real juice. And yeah. in WCW, they never really, like, he, they had the faces of fear, but, like, they sort of disappeared when the NWO came around. A lot of people did. Yeah, I just yeah. watched him versus Sting at, um... Bash of the Beach, nineteen ninety-five. I didn't even know those two guys ever wrestled before. <laughs> yeah, he was he was around a lot, yeah. a long time. You know, between tag teams and mm-hmm. individuals. And I actually met him last year down in North Carolina. And oh, really? You wouldn't believe how super nice guy because you always hear these things about how tough he was. And, yeah, yeah. You know, but definitely a nice guy. But I just, yeah, I don't think they'll induct him. Yeah. IRS Erwin R. Scheister, Mike Rotunda. I didn't even know he wasn't already in it. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Triple not. H tweeted that he was, but he is not in there. Oh. Yeah. Definitely should be in. Yeah. I, I, I think it goes without saying, and I don't want to just say just because he passed away, but I think Bray obviously will be I, in there. I think at they, some point. they probably do do that this year. Yeah. I, I think they might do it at this, at this WrestleMania. I, I look back at my Facebook memories and I go, man, we every we all freaking loved Bray Wyatt. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the Fiend thing, but he, re, like, in such a short time, short life, he reinvented himself so many times with that character, like even when he first came in, when he was in the tag team, like I remember, yep. loving the entrance a lot, like you know, from the very beginning, like he did a lot in nine years with that character, and not being even there for like a year or two, right? Yeah. You know, um, Jim Cornette. I don't think they'll do it, but is he deserving of the Hall of Fame? I don't think you give him a live mic, so I don't know. I, I mean, deserving though. From like a WWE perspective, I don't if know. you if you think Hall of Fame, do you think a guy there, that there are some impact? there are some wrestlers that transcend regardless of promotion? I don't think Jim Cornette's that person. <laughs> like, <Okay. laughs> I think he's deserving, but I don't think 
yeah, yeah. I don't think you'll see it. One, they, it's not going to happen unless it's somewhere he can drive to, which I don't know if, you know, Louisville to Pennsylvania is, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he just isn't doing anything anymore. Like, the guy that runs the conventions down in North Carolina has tried the last two years, and he just has no interest in Mm-hmm. It's, and doing anything wrestling wise, I mean, yeah. he did do it the year he inducted was was the Rock and Roll Express or the mid. Okay, yeah. so that yeah, was had him was, there. And he was there for that. Huh? Yeah, he was. He actually the one who inducted him. So I forgot that. Wow. Yeah, because I always thought they'd just bear, like be afraid to have him around. I mean, saying you want to kill Vince Russo and like literally saying I want well, to live long enough to piss on his grave is is, is pretty extreme. <laughs> I don't think there's any love left for Vince Russo there anymore. Yeah, yeah. no. You know. I don't, th- and I don't really. And put- Kevin Dunn's gone now, so that you know, because Cornette hated Kevin Dunn. Yeah. Like, oh really? Oh yeah. That's that was one of the big arguments that Cornette almost got fired over because he called him Bucky Beaver because of his teeth. And oh jeez. It was like in a booking meeting, like oh yeah, Cornette tells the whole story. Like he, he, I have to say, when you do listen to him, he, he says so. You know, he's fun to listen to. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. over the top. And I think some of that, like, I'm sure some of it's how he really feels, but I think he knows, like, that's what's getting people to listen to his show. So he goes on those rants purposely. Right. Yeah. You know? Michelle McCool. No, I mean, I mean, no. yeah, she's won a bunch of championships, married to Undertaker, but yeah, I don't think I don't think anything's really memorable. I think the time she was with tag team partners, Lay Cool, was like the highlight. But yeah, I think her most memorable moment is when she ha- got entered in the Women's Royal Rumble and she came from over the railing and entered the Rumble. I felt the same way, like when they put Charmel in, I was like, okay, Charmel, I liked what she did with King Booker, but that's King long Booker. enough to be in the Hall of Fame. She was a Nitro girl in that, and that's it. Yeah, that I can recall. Oh, she was the manager of um, the artist formerly known as Prince Ikea. <laughs> that's a big deal, you know. I. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, Again, I, when I say this, I'm talking more of their career because WWE will put people in even if they, you know, like Vern Gagne is in and everything. Raven. I think so. And, and this would be the year to do it because yeah. they're in Philadelphia, so I would say yes. I mean, he had his run as Johnny Polo in WWF, yep. you know, and then Raven in ECW and WCW and then back in WWF, so yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I think he is a Hall of Fame quality person. I just don't know if they'll ever do it. I don't know if they'll pull the trigger. Yeah, I don't know if they care about him enough. Uh, to be honest, though, I remember when I found when he came to WCW because I didn't see ECW before and was like, "Is that Johnny Polo?" <laughs> like I was so confused. And um, uh, here's one though: he's done a lot behind the scenes. Um, was like, the, you know, the biggest one of the biggest role players in ECW. They are in Philly. I think he's deserving. Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, I mean, he. I think he would fit the category of someone who has done enough for the business to give back, to go into the Hall of Fame, especially from an ECW, and they are in Philadelphia. I know he's in TNA right now, but they have... Yeah, but they've done that, but they've done cross-backs before yeah. with that stuff, so I don't think that's an issue. Um, I mean, this is the year to do it if you're going to do it. If if it's not in Philadelphia, then I don't think he is ever going to get that the nod. Yeah, definitely deserving, um, but I don't know if it'll happen. You know, if it doesn't happen this year, you yeah. know, yeah, I don't see it happening because this is really the time to do it is where they're at. This is a no-brainer. I mean, I am bringing up a lot of ECW guys specifically because this is in Philly, but I think this is a no-brainer. I don't know if it'd be this year, but Paul Heyman. Yeah, no, he's 100%. But I don't, I, I, I don't think he wants to be put in yet. Some of these guys who are still working don't want that name going when he's going down the hall. Because like, they always announce it when you're a Hall of Famer, and I don't know if he wants that yet. Yeah, he might feel like that's the end, you know, if he's... Yeah. Yeah, and he has made jokes about being older now and stuff like that, but visionary, for sure. I mean, if he had money, who knows what could have happened. Though, I think ECW was kind of hard to be mainstream. Yeah, it was not a a place advertisers wanted to go to. Yeah. Victoria. No. Yeah, no. More deserving than Michelle McCool. We both said no to Michelle McCool. Yeah. I know. I think I think I thought, I thought Victoria had a lengthy career. I think she should be in. What did she do that's so memorable? Because I can't think of anything she did that's memorable. Shaved Molly Holly's head. She had the coolest finisher, the, the Widow's Peak. Uh, feuds with Trish Stratus. Um, and I think she just had like a lengthier career. Like when they could bring her back, she would get a pop. Um, I just think for like the women's division – when they started to have those more advanced matches, she was one of the people there, including with like Alita or Trish, who are both Hall of Famers. I think she was a role player in that. 
if that makes sense. You know, not like you're like the biggest names out of it, but um, doubtful. But he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I got to meet him recently. The franchise Shane Douglas. I, I think he is worthy of the Hall of Fame. I just don't know if WWE will ever do that for him. Is he in the other pro wrestling Hall of Fame? What, like PWI? Or? Yeah, some, there's another one. Not sure. I, yeah, I'm not even sure. I just don't think he'll, even he wants to do right. it. That's the whole issue I see with it. Definitely deserving. Uh, but I was surprised, though, like 10 years ago he, when you watched the Monday Night Wars, he was interviewed for that. Or was it some? I think it was the Monday Night Wars, but. You sure it wasn't the ECW? No, it wasn't. They never interviewed him for that because they never did another one. But yeah. I wonder if they just stole a clip of him like on a whole yeah, different yeah. interview and just threw it in. I don't know. I just because yeah, I, I remember like there's. I a mean, few the people only thing I can see it happen is because Vince isn't there anymore. But right. he also wasn't big fans of Triple H and the, the Click either. So I just don't know that. Yeah, and I mean, the only thing you, you know, WWE you don't really have anything really there for him that was Hall of Fame. Yeah. WCW, no. honestly, nothing really yeah. that Hall of Fame. But if you look, look ECW at like, is like, all. Yeah, if you look at Bam Bigelow or Lex Luger, one of these guys, you're going to get pushed from the fans for demand to do that. I don't know if the fan demand for Shane Douglas to be in the Hall of Fame is there either. No, it's a very small Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of the nicest guys you can ever meet. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Shane McMahon. Yeah, but none of the McMahons are in there right now. Like None of the, none of the guys are like in that... I'll then throw Stephanie in there too. I mean, yeah, I think, but I think the whole family needs to be in but. eventually. But I don't. Again, he's. I don't think Linda will ever do it though. Yeah. No, I, I think she's done with her. Like, I don't even know if they're. Are they divorced? I don't know if they ever got officially divorced, but I know she did an interview one time, and like they kept trying to talk to her about Vince, and she was just like, "We're not going to talk about that." Like, yeah. she just yeah. has no interest in like talking about wrestling at all anymore. Is she still in the political? No, no, no. she had two failed attempts. Oh, man. If yeah. she didn't have her association that she did, she probably would have right. succeeded because she's a smart businesswoman. Like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that, that probably went against her. I mean, didn't they run a political ad saying, like, all this stuff that happened in the storyline at one yeah, point about did. her? Yeah. Or, I mean, she was... She, they did a whole house show in Connecticut that I went to that was, like, supposed to be her promoting her campaign, and then she didn't wind up coming because they decided it wasn't, like, appropriate. Whatever. And Vince came and, like, cut a promo. It was, like, they called it, like, Fan Appreciation Day. And oh, then, really? Yeah, when she was running, and it was just, yeah... Yeah, yeah, that's a tough thing. I mean, honestly, what do you do? I just want her to write a book where she can tell all, but I'm sure this is all kinds of agreements signed between oh, yeah. her and Vince because if anybody can tell everything there is to know about Vince, it's her. It's her, and it can't be pretty. No. It can't no, be. I mean. He, the guy's a workaholic. He, I mean, there's really not a lot of difference between Vince and Trump. <laughs> there's like <laughs> right. not, you know. Um, I This was, so we thought Leo was going to be here. But I, I think maybe you, you've done interviews before. Yeah. You used to have a TV show. And we get one. We yeah. really got to talk about that on on this show sometime. Someday, yeah. Um, it was a little while back, but yeah, yeah. But I did see the clip, and it was that was the only was, one. That's the only one that exists because all the yeah. tapes were in my basement, the originals, and they got soaked in water, and they went all the originals. Well, the guy you guys interviewed even commented on it. Yeah, and it was it, it, if you get what John Rodeo was John guess, Rodeo yeah. was, was the, the name wrestling of the... manager. It was, I called it Inside Pro Wrestling. It was yeah down in Massachusetts and. We did 95 to 2001. So okay. Did like, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And we did it weekly. We did it weekly, like 600 and something episodes, I think. So That's crazy. What, now, what do you type in to find the episode if people want to see Just it? Just Inside Pro Wrestling Inside on YouTube Pro and it'll come up. Yeah. Because it was cool. We'll type in John Rodeo and you'll find it. Yeah. I, I, I watched and he was in character. It was, it was good. It was fun. Good. And we kind of went back and forth. We'd have like in character interviews and then we'd have other episodes where we just, you know. I like that. I, I do like that because I like the, the variety. And Leo's done a few in-character interviews. So it's funny. I did a show where I co-hosted with Leo, and there was a guest on there that wanted to kind of do in-character, and Leo just didn't think it was going to work. Like, it kind of went, we went, he kind of went back and forth between it during the show, but yeah. I thought it was a good idea, but, you know, Leo just didn't think it was going to, like, going to work. It's kind of hard, I think, in this day and age for those interviews to, like, happen and for people to even, like, See, it was hard with this person was he was talking about. So one promotion he's a, a you know a face, and the other promotion is a heel. So it's like how do you play a character and then talk about right. both places? You know. Yeah, that's hard. You have to focus on one. Yeah, because that's how it is in the independents. People are like, hey, your baby face here, your heel there, and that. I mean, when I first started going to independent shows, I didn't understand. Like, I just didn't understand that. Um, different companies would be doing different things. You yeah, know? it was very and confusing. Then, and it got very, real quick. I learned. I go. Okay, they do their own thing here. Yeah, I mean, I remember my first experience with you know independent shows was Tony Rumble shows, and he had a weekend of like three shows, 
and you go one night and they have this tag team, the Troublemakers, and they lose the tag team belts. Like one night was to like Hillbilly Jim and somebody else, and the next night you go to the show and the Troublemakers were the champions again, and they lose them to like the two doinks. Like, <laughs> and it would just be because it was you know separate towns, nowhere is really that close to each yeah, other. Yeah. So it was yeah. the thought was, yeah, the other people aren't going to, and there was no TV, so it was. You know, oh yeah, and it wasn't like social media where you could just no, so you out. didn't, you could get away with it, and, yeah. and that was the formula, not just there, like all independent promote, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's that. It can get confusing, but if you guys could interview three wrestlers, dead or alive, who would you interview? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, you, you can go first. Yeah. So I would probably say Hulk Hogan. It probably would never happen, but just because that's probably in my mind. Like, and this could be this could be a whole other discussion, but I still think he's the biggest star. I mm-hmm. agree. You know, to this day, still, so if you say his name, people know who he was. Yeah. So that, that would definitely be one. And we're talking wrestling, right? Yep. Okay. I mean, I was lucky enough. I got to interview Bruno when he was at Sports World. I got to interview Kill really? Kowal. Like, oh, I killed wow. Kowalski. We actually did two episodes because we were at the end of one, and I'm wrapping up, and he goes, no, 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 we're going to keep going. And we had to, I had to cut it and edit it into two episodes because he just kept talking. Like, oh, wow. He actually lived in the town that I did the show at at the time. So um, That's crazy, yeah. But yeah, I definitely say Hulk Hogan. Probably Vince McMahon would be number two, I think. Um, and number three... I would probably say, gee, that's a tough one, but I would probably say Randy Savage is my third one. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, Randy, you've got to be careful with some, with some of the questions I've had, too. Yeah, yeah and I, I would say uh, oh, Bret Hart, probably one. Nick Bockwinkle. That guy is amazing. Like I've been watching the AWA and WCW a lot more, but it's just like, guy just had it. And then uh, I'd probably say Scott Hall, just because like, that's, you know, the childhood and all that so Bockwinkle's a good one he's a smart like his knowledge of just everything he's like he's a super yeah. smart guy like and you could see he would use these words in his interviews that like you'd be like what is that word mm-hmm. yeah he passed away not too long ago a couple of years back Bockwinkle. yeah seven or eight years ago now at this point because I remember the first time I was introduced to him he was like a commissioner in WCW yep. mm-hmm. and I had no, you know when I was a little kid I had no idea that these guys were had all this history before you know I started watching so yeah I went back and watched him and Mr. Perfect well uh, Kurt Hunting at the time back at I forget what function they did that one of his last matches that it was still part of AWA he still had at that point it's just like he just had it he if he was in a, he would he would have worked in any decade in professional wrestling he was a horrible commentator though. so after yeah. he left no, AWA <laughs> he went to work for Vince as a commentator and it was just he wasn't like on any of the big TV shows, but like they'd have like primetime wrestling, and they'd like have him commentate a match with like Lloyd Alfred Hayes, and it was just oh god, yeah. oh, don't don't pick on Lloyd Alfred Hayes. He was the, <laughs> he was the best. Like oh no, I liked there. him. I couldn't imagine him being with someone that wasn't playing off of him. Yeah, I liked Hayes. I liked Gorilla Monsoon and Heenan. Those were the guys. Did you ever get to hear the commentary team of uh, Bruce Pritchard, which brother love? Duke Doherty, Pete Doherty, and then the, the remember the female ring announcer? You probably don't remember it. No, no, I watched, think But there was a female ring announcer, Mike McGurk, when she was like the ring announcer on Wrestling Challenge, and they were just so bad. Mm. So bad. Duke Doherty was a big like jobber from the bot. He lived in Dorchester. Right? He was the Duke oh, of Dorchester. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, I mean, I, I will say this. When I went to a fan fest with Leo one time, and I got star. It was so weird. Sean Mooney was there, who was, you know, a backstage announcer, and I was... Like starstruck. There was all these wrestlers around. Like I went and met JJ Dillon and all this, and I didn't. But for some reason, Sean Mooney. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, it's Sean Mooney. Because like when I first started rest, uh, wrestling, when I started when I was watching wrestling. It was like him, Gene Okerlund, like all these. They were like yeah. larger than life because I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I and I said to him, I go, you know, Sean, like, if you don't mind me asking, like, why did you leave wrestling? He's like, oh, I just thought I want to do other stuff. And he went on to be like a you know a news anchor yeah. for years, but. I thought he was the coolest thing, you know. Um, I want to get into this, buy or sell. I'm going to give you guys a thing, topic. You tell me if you're buying or selling. Sure. Um, there's been a lot of arguments over this. I'm just going to go through these quick. I mean, buy or sell Barry Bonds for the Baseball Hall of Fame? Sell. I'm out on him. He, it, and let, he's, just, he's just kind of a jerk. <laughs> I would buy just because I think the record still means something, yeah. regardless of how like how many other people are in that, you know, in the same situation and just didn't know about it. Yeah, I'm buying too. I just think uh, it's just not going to happen, and we keep arguing about it about you know people sharing his stats. Like we know, we yeah. know what Barry Bonds was. You're not giving us anything yeah. new. It's Fan- just fancy to realize it's the Baseball Writers Association of America's Hall of Fame is not the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. That's valid too. 
buy or sell Tony Khan? Uh, I, I'm selling him the person I would buy his company. Like, I hope his company does well, but he's just, you know, I don't really know what he does from a business perspective. <laughs> yeah. I would sell. We don't even, I just, just his drug use alone would be reason mm-hmm. enough to say see ya. Yeah. I gotta say, his media scrums are pretty hilarious. Like, they're very easy questions, and when they ask him a hard question, he, they ask him, they're like, Tony, do you think you should, you know, add people to the booking team, or you come off the booking team? What? What do you, what do you mean? You should have AI just do it for him. Just put it in chat GPT <laughs> and let that figure it out. It'll probably be better. Yeah. Yeah. At least it'd be some type of storyline. Um, Hook. He got a title shot last night. He's a pretty smaller guy, but they've really tried to push him. How old is he? I think he's probably like 25. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy him. I'd, I mean, he has a future in the business. He did look a lot smaller next to Samoa Joe than I thought he would. It looked like it should have been a squash match in some way. It did feel like that, but I mean, I, I would say he has a future in the business, so I'd buy. Yeah. I would definitely buy him. I mean, I don't think the big guy thing is that much of a necessity. You've got small guys mm-hmm. out there now. I don't think he's ever going to be like headlining. You know, AW is probably the biggest place he's going to get to headline. Like, I right. think he's smart to stay where he is. Yeah, there was rumors that WWE were interested in him, but I don't know if you can. And he's Taz's son, right? Yeah, he's yeah. Taz's son. Cause like, nice not... kid, nice kid, not a really nice kid. You know? Yeah, like last night Taz was like, because he was getting beat up pretty bad, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take my headset off. I got to, you know, because they do play it at that. But um, I don't think the, I don't know if you could do anything with like Taz being his dad like you could with some other wrestlers. Right, because Taz can't do anything. Yeah. You know. And it's not like he. It's not like you know your dad was Dusty Rhodes, you right. know, um, or Ric Flair. Um, what about Jinder Mahal? What do you, what do you mean? Uh, buy or sell his career, or like him going forward? I would say going forward. I think you got everything you were gonna get out of that, so I'm selling. I don't know what else you would do with Jinder Mahal right now. I would buy. I think capitalize on you know now's the time to capitalize you know even though he lost the match like there's still time to capitalize yeah. you know he's had those big segments with rock you know he had the match like yeah he might not headline but i think you know you can make something of him right now i just don't think he even gets a match at mania i think he's in the, the if they even do it the battle royal on set on friday night like i don't know what you who he goes with there's just right now there's just nowhere for him i don't to think fit. he's had like a big big match since before this was like McIntyre was the last one I really could remember. He can still go. I don't know why they stopped using him. Was he hurt? That I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those things where there's a lot of guys um, that, yeah, yes, I don't know. I think with their roster right now, WWE, like even with the two sh- two, two brands, three brands, whatever, you call it, it's just still so way, way too many people. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like, there's so many places to work, but these rosters are so hu- huge that it's like people still don't get used. Yeah. It and does help, though, to keep people off TV. Like, you, CM Punk doesn't have to be there every week. He's there, like, every bi weekly. Yeah. And then, yeah, Cody Rhodes doesn't have to be there every week. It helps, like, you know, it makes mental more health. Special. Mental health is probably. Do you think awkward. they would benefit by going back to, like, separate brand pay per views, if you think? I think they I mean, would. You can't I, call them pay per views anymore. Yeah, I think there's a better chance of people watching them now because. You're not paying forty dollars twice a month. You're paying ten dollars for one. You know. That's the one thing, by the way. WWE missed out on when w- when the NFL forced people to get Peacock for last Friday, last Saturday's game. They should have been advertising. This also includes the WWE Royal Rumble at the end of the month, but they didn't. That's yeah, because people were canceling. I'm like, oh, I already have you, Peacock. It, you automatically for the month, no matter what. Even if you cancel right away. It, Peacock is worth how much is it? I paid for it. and I don't even know. I have cable. It was free. So you get it free um, if you. Pay the extra five dollars to get the no ads and the premium. Yeah. And that's what gives you like all the like extra like the territory contact on the network and stuff. So, yeah, I get it free and then I pay the five dollars to get the. Yeah, I love mm-hmm. Peacock. I do. I mean, I had yeah. the Ted series. I watched. Um, but yeah, if you have Xfinity, it's free with your Xfinity yeah. subscription. Yeah, that's yeah. a great deal. I watched Based on a True Story, which is this yeah. uh, series. I, Make your own decisions when you see it. But remember the show Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the the comedy. Yeah, they actually have a drama on Peacock, like. Based on that TV show, but it's totally hop- like totally serious. Like, yeah, I gotta it see. It was really that. good. It was really good. Like, it was good. It okay, was really good. Yeah, I'll check that out. There's, yeah, I like Peacock. So I mean, I, I when they said the football game was on, I was like, that's not a big deal to me. Well, I think the problem is just everything going to streaming between you know 
there, Amazon having the Thursday night games, you know. For a while I was working in a bar, you don't know how many times we got complaints. You guys aren't showing the football game? No, we don't have a Peacock. We don't have an Amazon Prime subscription yeah. here. Like, yeah. you know. And I hate how the NFL's commercials are like, we're making history. It's like, yeah, well, we don't, like, most of the people don't like this. You're, like, rubbing it in our faces, you know. I mean, they're saving cable right now. So, I mean, it's only a matter of time before they go to the own streaming service yeah. and they get all the action. Well, it's kind of like there was network TV, then it went to cable, and now yeah. it's going to streaming. It's kind of just that, mm -hmm. you know, evolution where that's where it's going to be eventually. Like, what a time to be alive, honestly. <laughs> um, buy or sell, they did this in Limitless Wrestling recently. They split. The main state posse, they've been a tag team in the area for a very long time. Again, they're split in Limitless. That doesn't mean they're split in every promotion. I like it. What do you guys think? I didn't know they split. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm buying it. Give them a chance. Go single, yeah. see if that works. I think it's a time. Yeah, I would buy it just because it's a chance to see, like, let them do some singles, you know. Yeah. Even not just against each other, but, you know, against other people. And, I like. I think it's a good feud too. Like uh, I like when tag teams eventually split, and um, and you can always go that full circle where eventually right. they wind up back together. Yeah. yeah, I think they've done a lot, and I, I haven't gone to a Limitless show in a long time, but I think they've done a lot of good if advertising. It wasn't six hours away. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's always miserable um, driving there. I mean, I'm glad that the times I went that I did, but it was hard, you know. And, and yeah, I can't do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, Buy or sell Chaotic's Cold Fury every year. They're they're almost like WrestleMania for Chaotic Wrestling. I mean, I buy that it's a it's a great concept, a great idea. I haven't been in I know in I haven't years. Either. I just fell off with Chaotic. No no offense to Chaotic, it's just that other things have been coming up. You know. I would buy just on the fact they're still drawing. Yeah. Um, I would say the company is not necessarily. I still go on not as much as I used to. I used to go every month. I I go on occasion here and there and. Um, more so to see, you know, the few people there, like Rich Pelio and people that I know. But I find myself just, and this is no offense to any of that roster there, if anybody's watching it, it's just I don't personally have that emotional involvement in the wrestlers anymore. Like, yeah. So it's hard for me to be there and watch a whole show. Like, I, I don't disagree with you. Like, I, I still, I might I might go this year, I don't know, because Cold Fury was something I used to always look forward to. We had front row seats a couple times. Yeah, and it just, I don't know, over time, like, things have changed. People have moved on, and I'm not getting that same like that same feeling I had before, you know. And it it is what it is. Like things change, but yeah. I mean, they're still very successful. Still some great talent there. So yeah, you know, I just think yeah, it's it's changed. It'd be hard. To, you know, I would still buy it because I think there's money to be made from that. Part yeah. Of just for me personally, I don't have that. I know, and uh, and hopefully, it's I mean, too bad. You know. Things cycle, you know, and then that's kind of how it is. But I I kind of. I've been thinking about that. I might go this year because I used to look forward to that so much. And then the pandemic happened and it kind of ruined everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, as long but. as they don't do it at UTech where they just did pandemonium. I almost went to pandemonium this past week, but the par there's no parking. It's oh, just yeah. horrible. Like, if there's no parking or something, I won't go. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. yeah. So well, then don't go to any of the Lowell shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you guys coming yeah, on today. You. It's Dan, been a blast. Well, always good to see yeah, you. Nice to see you. Yeah. 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 Congratulations on the uh, baby. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Let us know. We'll look forward to the yeah, reveal. Yeah. The big we'll reveal look forward coming. to the future baby Dan. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but everybody out there, have a great week. Uh, keep your heads up. And again, c congratulations, uh, Coach Mayo. Uh, but everybody, we'll see you next time. Left Freedom Ring. <laughs>